Hey creators, today I'm going to show you how to use Substance Painter. If you follow this channel, you know we talk about Substance Painter a lot. We basically do an intro video every time there's a big change in the software. But if you're looking to expand your skills beyond the beginner level, I've got some exciting news for you guys. We've got a new membership tier on Production Create called the Skills Tier. Now this is replacing the old Sample Tier. So if you've already got a Sample Tier account, you don't have to do anything. You've already got the Skills Tier. So what's included in the Skills Tier? Well, the main thing is we're going to start doing more in-depth courses where we can go deeper than we're able to do on YouTube in a single video. Now, don't worry. That doesn't mean that we're going to stop doing free tutorials on YouTube. This is just for people who've already scratched the surface and want to go even deeper. And by the way, if you're a pro user, you have access to all these courses as well. In addition to these courses that you're going to get with the skills tier account, we're also going to make some assets that used to be pro available to skills tier members. Basically, if we use any pro assets in the tutorials, you'll get access to them. And a pretty major change is the entirety of our character builder tool will be available to skills tier members. So as a skills tier member, you can download all of the full quality characters that used to only be available to pros on RenderCrate. And that includes the Unreal Engine format. So you can just assemble a game character and drop it straight into Unreal Engine and start running around and building your video game. This video right here that you're watching is actually the first episode of a new Substance Painter skills course. In this video, we're gonna quickly cover the interface of Substance Painter and the process and workflow of texturing an asset from start to finish in one sitting. You can follow along with whatever model you want, but if you're watching this video up on the skills tier page, you can download the model that I'm using right below this video. All right, that's enough of all that. Let's jump into the lesson. So this course is going to assume that you know a little bit about 3D programs, whether it's Blender or Maya or Cinema 4D but it's going to assume that you know nothing at all about Substance Painter. So if you're a complete beginner who's never opened the program, you should be able to follow along just fine. If you have your own 3D models already, feel free to use those, but I'm gonna provide some 3D models for you if you don't already have something to work with. If you look at the files for lesson one, you should see a folder with Medieval Hammer High FBX and Medieval Hammer Low, and that's all we need for this lesson. Let's jump into Substance Painter. So when you first open Substance Painter, it'll probably look something like this, depending on the version you're using. The windows might be in different places, but you should have the same basic layout. So we've got the Assets window, which has all of your materials and texture maps and things like that. If you're in a fairly new version of Substance Painter, you'll have access to the Adobe Store where you can download more of their materials. Oh, and by the way, if I ever use a material that you don't have over the course of these lessons, feel free to find one that's comparable. You don't have to use the exact same materials that I'm using. So if I'm using like a metal material and you don't have this exact one, just use a different one. It's totally fine. You should also see a window called texture set list, layers, texture set settings, properties. And then over here on the far right of the screen, you'll also see little pop-out menus like display settings and shader settings. We'll definitely be using these as well. To get started, go up to file, new, or press control N. In this window, we need to load our low poly model. So I'm gonna click select right here and I'll click Medieval Hammer Low and press Open. Once again, I'm gonna gloss over any details that we don't need to talk about in this first video. So we're gonna go kinda of quick just to give you an overview of the interface. Now these settings here should be fine. Uh, 4K, normal map format, OpenGL if you're gonna be working with Blender. If you're gonna be working with Unreal Engine, then you wanna do DirectX. And again, we'll talk about these other settings in a later video. Let's just press OK. And when this opens, you should see your 3D model. Now. Quick note, you may see a split screen like this. That's totally fine. This actually might be the default view right here. Basically, we have our 3D window on the left and our 2D UV view on the right. If you press F1, you get this split view. If you press F2, you get just the 3D view. And if you press F3, you get just the 2D UV view. So I'm gonna press F2 just to stay in 3D mode for now. You hold down Alt and use the left mouse button to turn the camera like this. To move the camera, you hold down Alt and use the middle mouse button. And to zoom, you hold down Alt and use the right mouse button. So it's the standard camera controls for every program except Blender. And most of you are probably coming from Blender, so that may feel a little bit weird to you. If this ever ends up off the screen or the camera ends up in a weird place, just press F to frame the entire object. Now, if you want to rotate the light, hold down Shift and drag the right mouse button and that'll rotate the light for you. That also rotates the light in the 2D view. Okay, some other quick notes about the interface. If we go over here to the top right and click on this little computer monitor that says display settings. First of all, you can change the environment map, which is the HDR. So we're on this one here by default, which is called Panorama, but we can choose one called Bus Garage, which gives you kind of a green tint. My favorite one is actually down here at the bottom 
called Studio Tomoko. I like it because it's pretty much neutral white and it has a really strong light side and dark side and it just gives you a nice sense of volume. Down here we can also turn on shadows. I like this but I always find that they're a little bit too dark so I usually turn down the shadow opacity as well and that just gives it more of a sense of realism and volume. One thing about Substance Painter that's kind of annoying is when you turn the camera around now we're looking at the dark side so you have to turn the light. If you don't want to do that you can change the environment alignment from world to camera and just line up your light one time and now the light will turn with the object or with the camera and you'll always be on the light side. So that's just a quick little tip. Scrolling down there are a few more options that you should be familiar with if you're familiar with 3D in general. So we can change the focal length and get kind of a fisheye look or we can set the focal length to something like 70 millimeters and now it's more of a telephoto look. So that's all just personal preference. Down here we have other things like post effects, depth of field, lens flare and all that. We're not going to mess with that in this video but it's there if you want to. Okay so now we need to bake our details onto this model. We'll talk a lot more about baking in a future video, but just to really quickly get through the process so we can start texturing, we're going to go up here to where it says baking. It's a little picture of a croissant. And here's the baking window. First thing we need to do is import our high definition mesh. So right here where it says high definition meshes, I'm going to click on this little file and then I'll grab medieval hammer underscore high and press open. Once again, I want to keep reiterating that we're going to go over all of these settings in much more depth in a future video. So just follow along with what I'm doing and we'll explain what's going on a little bit later, but I'm just gonna turn down the max frontal distance. You can see that's shrinking this yellow cage. I'm gonna turn it down until I start to see red. You don't wanna see any red, so maybe about right here. And then right here where it says low poly mesh suffix and high poly mesh suffix, these say underscore low and underscore high. The way I set up this file, the models are named with an underscore low, but with an uppercase L. And that's just the way I set it up in Blender when I was modeling. So we want to make sure that that naming convention matches in Substance Painter. So I'm just going to change this to a capital L and a capital H. And that's just my bad. I should have remembered that Substance Painter uses lowercase by default, but that definitely has to match or this won't work. Okay, over here on the left, we're going to really quickly run down some settings where it says ID right here. I'm just going to change this from material color to mesh ID. Here where it says ambient occlusion, this should work. If you want to crank up the quality, you can turn up the secondary rays all the way. That'll make it render a little bit slower, but it's worth it. Same thing with curvature. We can increase the secondary rays right here. And then same thing with thickness. Again, that's optional. If your computer is very slow, that will definitely add a little bit of time. Okay, now I'm going to press Bake Selected Textures. And we should see all these colorful things appearing on the screen. And you should start to see a hint of little scratches and dings and damage. All right, when it's done, click back on this paintbrush right here in the top right. And I'm really quickly just going to press B for bake. And that's going to cycle through all of the maps that we just created. So yours should look something like what I have on screen. So a bunch of random colors. This one here says ambient occlusion. And it should look like shadows in the deep recesses. If I press it again, I should see one called curvature and it should look like the edges are highlighted looking good. And you should also see detail that you didn't see before, like all these scratches and dings and dents. That's very important. If I press B again, I should see position. You should see a gradient like this. Thickness map should look something like this. It's probably nothing in the height map. And if I press it a few more times, you should get to the normal map, which looks like this. We'll explain what all these maps are doing in a future video. But if yours look something like this, then we should be good to go. When you're done checking out your maps, press M for material. Okay, so now what we can do is apply these pre-made materials to different parts of this model to create the look that we're going for. In this course, we're going to get pretty advanced and make our own custom materials. But for this quick workflow overview video, we're just going to use some pre-made materials and not adjust them too much. So I'm going to click right here on this little sphere, the second button, and I'm going to search for the word wood. Now we have a few different options for wood handles here. I'm going to click and drag one of these onto my model, and you should notice that it applies to the handle. Now the reason why I didn't apply to the rest of the model is because this is actually made up of two different materials in this case. So you have the handle material and the head material. Now it applied to the handle, but it also applied to this little metal cap and the leather straps, which we don't want. So I'll press undo. And instead, we can hold down control and drag and drop it onto just the part that we want to be wood. So I'm going to drag and drop it right here on this part. And I can see that it applies only to the wood handle. Now the reason that happened is not because it's a separate object, but because we baked this ID map right here. And you can see that it's adding a new solid color to each part of the model. Now, if you don't like that wood, I kind of don't like that wood, just press undo and try out a different one. This one actually looks pretty cool. Notice over here on the right, it created a new layer called Woodship 
whole Nordic. Oh, and another thing to take note of is you can view the texture in flat 2D UV space as well. Okay, let's find a nice leather for the handle. So I'll search for the word leather. And once again, feel free to try whichever one you want. This one called leather calf grain looks pretty cool. Let's try another one just for fun. This one here called leather stylized might be cool. I like this one even though it's stylized and not really realistic, but it picks out the edges in a brighter color, which I think looks pretty cool. And from far away, it reads really well. For a much grungier look, we can try this one called leather damaged or this one called leather natural colored. Looks pretty cool for kind of a suede or a rawhide look. All right, let's do the brass fittings now. So I'm gonna search for the word metal and this one called bronze armor works pretty well. So I'll drag and drop this onto the butt cap down here at the bottom. And now we've got a nice bronze looking material. Now I know I said that we weren't gonna to do too much customization, but I do wanna show you guys a little bit of that. So let's drag and drop that bronze material onto the hammerhead as well. And you can see that it's a bronze color, but I want it to look more like steel. So over here in the layers where it says bronze armor, I'm gonna open this up and I can see all of the different layers that make up this metal material. I always recommend that you make your changes starting from the bottom and working your way up. So I'm gonna click on the bottom layer called base metal. And down here in the properties, I'm going to change the base color to something gray. And that will make it look more like a steel hammerhead. I can see the edges still have kind of a bronzy effect though. So I can see right here where it says edge damage, that is still bronze. So I'll click on that and I'll also make that gray. And that's how you make really quick modifications to materials. Knowing that, feel free to go back and modify the wood and the leather if you wanna change the color of those as well. Really quick note though about the interface, you may notice that the wood and the leather aren't appearing in the layers anymore. And that's because we're in the head material. Remember I told you that this model is made up of two different materials? If I click back on handle material, then I'll see the bronze armor, the leather, and the wood. And if I click on head material, I see just the bronze armor, which is the hammerhead. Okay, let's just try another random metal and throw this on the straps right here. That actually looks pretty cool. Maybe I want this spike on top to be that original bronze armor color as well. And then we need some sort of a material for these rivets. I'll try steel armor. All right, this is definitely not the best hammer I've ever textured before, but it gives us a quick overview of the interface. So we'll just call it done for now. We'll come back and make this much better in a later video, but I wanna show you how to export these maps into Blender and apply them to your model. So let's go up to File, Export Textures, where it says Output Directory. Go ahead and click on that and direct them where you want them to go and then press Export. So it's gonna generate all of these maps here. When it's done, just close the window and jump over to Blender or whichever modeling program you like to use. Inside of Blender, I'm gonna to go to the Shading tab and notice, like I said, we have the head material. And if I click here, we have the handle material. So let's do the head material first. Now I'm gonna use the Node Wrangler plugin, which if you don't have it activated or you're not aware of it, it just makes plugging in textures a lot quicker and easier. So if you don't have it turned on, here's how you activate it. Go up to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Node Wrangler and just turn on this checkbox. With the Node Wrangler active, it's really easy to plug in all of your textures with one click. So I'm gonna start by deleting this normal map node because it sometimes can conflict with the nodes that the Node Wrangler creates. So I'll just delete that. Then I'll click on my material and hit Control Shift T. I'll navigate to the folder where my materials are and I'll select my head textures. Now. Substance Painter gave us more maps than we need. We don't actually need to use all of these. So I'm gonna grab the head material base color and the metallic map, the normal map that says OpenGL after it, and the roughness. And I'll press open. And we should see that these are looking pretty much the way they looked in Substance Painter. Very cool. Let's do that one more time with the handle material. So I'll click on the handle and I'll delete this normal map node. Click on this material node and press Control Shift T. And I'll grab the handle base color the metallic, normal OpenGL, and roughness. And I'll press open, and we should see our completed textured hammer. Once again, it's not the most detailed or best looking prop I've ever textured, but we'll come back and do a much better job in a future video. Hopefully that gives you a nice, quick overview so that you're familiar enough with the program to continue with the series. Once again, the next video, lesson two, is gonna be a much more technical, almost scientific overview of what's going on with light and materials and texture maps. Feel free to skip that if you just wanna jump straight into the artistic side of texturing. But if you want to be serious about texturing, I recommend you at least go back to that video after the full course is over. All right, I'll see you in the next one.